Okay, so first off, a huge thank you from me for the very positive response on the last animal video that I did. Um, all the very nice comments and likes on that have really encouraged me to make more videos like this. And also to get a new microphone because, I mean really, the internal microphone on the camera is just awful. So now I do have a new one, which you can hopefully hear, um, which actually isn't that great for voice recording. I got it more so that we can hear stuff like this now. Nice and crunchy. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the actual topic of the video. Uh, one of my Linothele Megatheloides, which is a great Latin name, by the way, I love it, um, has molted recently and, as you can see, uh, really needs to be rehoused. Um, so that's what I did, and I took this opportunity to get some macro footage of one. Um, otherwise, it's, it's very hard to film them with um, them constantly being inside of their nets. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I did. I got some very nice footage of one, um, and as far as I'm aware, there really isn't any on YouTube anywhere. Um, and I'm taking this opportunity to talk a bit about the husbandry, which is very easy, and also to clear up some of the misconceptions that people have about these, uh, because there's quite a few of them. So let's actually do that first. So there are three main misconceptions that people have about these spiders. Um, that they are funnel web spiders, that they are very venomous with potentially lethal venom even, uh, and that they are true spiders. Um, the first two are sort of connected um, and probably come back to the fact that one very famous funnel web spider was in the same family for a long time, and that is Atrax robustus the Sydney funnel web spider, which uh, does have potentially lethal venom, though as far as I know, no one has actually died to a bite of this spider since the specific anti-venom was introduced in the 80s. Um, still, that spider was in the same family as the Linothele that I have um, for a long time until it got moved to its own family, the Hexatelide. So now these are separate families, with the Hexatelide being the funnel web spiders, and the Diploride, which don't really have a common name in English, but if you translate it, it just translates to double-tailed spiders, and I think that's very fitting if you look at the spider, um, because one of their pairs of spinnerets is really very elongated, and it does look like the spider has like two tails. Anyway, so uh, the second misconception that they have very lethal venom, also not true, probably also comes back to this Atrax robustus being in that family for so long, um, but no. Um, all of the Diploride that you can get in the hobby, so Linothele and Ishnothele and some others, uh, don't have very potent venom. Though to be fair, uh, not a lot is actually known about their venom, which I suspect is because you can't actually get these to bite you. Um, they are very uh, skittish animals that don't really defend themselves. They don't go in threat postures, they don't get cornered, they simply run away if they can. Still, treat any venomous animal with respect, of course. And then the third misconception that these are true spiders is also not true. First off, the name in English, true spiders, for the Araneomorph spiders is really unfortunate, in my opinion, because it sort of implies that the others are like, what, fake spiders? That's, that's of course not true. There's simply two different kinds of spiders, and one of them is called true spiders in English, which uh, is sort of misleading. Um, anyway, so uh, these are not Araneomorph spiders. These are Mygalomorph spiders, so they are closely related to tarantulas, funnelweb spiders, and some other families. So here I'm finally rehousing the spider, and you can watch me fumble for almost two minutes trying to get it into this cricket box. Um, if you expected any sort of like professional advice on how to safely rehouse spiders, uh, 
this this is the wrong place um i would suggest uh going to tom moran's channel uh tom's big spiders if you want to see that sort of stuff um i just sort of wing it uh, so if you want any advice on spider rehousings just don't take it from me take it from tom Okay, and there we are. So this is the new enclosure for the spider, which is just a 5.8 liter Braplast box with just a little bit of substrate in there. Um, and they don't even really need substrate. It's only in there so I have something to put the sticks into. Um, they don't dig and they don't even sit on the substrate once they're done webbing. They will sit in their own web above it. So all they really need is a few sticks to attach their web to and they're happy. Um, you don't have to bother with a water bowl or a hide because those are also just going to get covered in web and they don't use them. You will also notice there's no ventilation holes in the side and that is because they also use these as anchor points for webbing so they're just gonna get covered anyway. Instead here I have made the lid with a mesh in it and that's uh, much harder for them to completely cover up with web so that allows at least for some ventilation. Then husbandry for these is really very simple. Temperature wise I just keep them at room temperature so 20 to 25 degrees celsius which is like uh, 70 to 80 fahrenheit. Um, humidity I don't care. Uh, I just spray their net every few days with water. About every three to five days I spray some water on there very lightly. Um, and once it evaporates I just wait a few days and then I do it again so they can drink food. Uh, they eat everything that moves that falls into their web, um, though they do seem to prefer to eat smaller stuff, um, so don't give them too big of, of, a, of, of a prey item. They do eat quite a lot actually and they grow pretty fast and they also get pretty big, at least this species. Um, Linothele megatheloides gets about 10 to 12 centimeter leg span as adults, which is like, what, like 4 to a bit under 5 inches. So I'm probably going to have to rehouse this one again um, and pretty soon too because they do grow quickly. Should you get one of these? In my opinion, yes, totally, but only if you have experience with uh, other fast spiders, so like fast arboreal tarantulas, because these are really very quick, um, faster than tarantulas, I would say. Their venom isn't that strong, so there's no worries there, but this, it's, this is a spider that could escape easily if you're inexperienced uh, with fast spiders. Um, if you do have some experience with like fast arboreal tarantulas though, I would definitely recommend getting one of these. They're very pretty um, in real life. The camera doesn't really bring it across, but they have this beautiful gold shine and as they get bigger, their legs turn this very dark blue to purple metallic color too. Um, they grow quickly, they eat a whole lot, they are very vicious and fast in taking down prey and they're just fun to watch. Also their webbing is like completely insane. Um, this box that I just set up, it's gonna be covered in web the next day. Like over just one night this spider is gonna completely fill this with webbing. And I'm not exaggerating, I'm just, actually I'm just gonna show you footage of the next day. Uh, what it looked like just 24, not even 24 hours later. So yeah, uh, as you can see, completely covered up just in one day. And over time, this is just going to get denser and denser and denser until you can't even really look through this anymore. Um, and I can show you that in the old box. Uh, here I'm, I'm trying to pull some of this stuff apart and it's so dense and uh, 
it's actually quite hard to to pull apart it's really strong um so yeah that's that's also something that's quite unique about them um and i definitely recommend anyone that's into tarantulas has a bit of experience with faster spiders to get one of these because they're great fun and they look amazing okay so finally a few updates at the end of the video um first off babies and a lot of them yes the exec of the heteropoda boyai female has hatched and now i have a whole lot of these tiny spiders um but look at them there's so many uh this is this is probably what some people's nightmares look like but i i think they're cute um the very proud mother is in this very temporary enclosure here to the side um actually uh, now that she's out there and she's finally eating again, I mean, look how thin she was right after I put her in there. She hasn't eaten uh, the whole time she had that egg sac. Um, so here's some feeding footage of her. And you can see she was very hungry. Um, <laughs> um, other updates. Um, a lot of people have asked me about the Metalyticus splendidus babies that I have. Um, and if I'm going to sell and ship them? And the answer is yes, and I'm now getting ready to do that. I will probably put an ad up on terroristic.com this week. Just search for Metalyticus uh, and you will find my offer. Um, these are now uh, second and third Insta. Um, and I really didn't want to sell them earlier because they are very, very fragile and I was afraid they wouldn't handle shipping very well. So you get a very rare and expensive mantis and they all arrive dead, right? So that, that wouldn't be good. So I waited a bit and now I'm a bit more confident that they will get through shipping without problems. Um, I'm working on a whole lot of other videos right now. Uh, like I said, all the positive responses on the first one have really inspired me to do a whole lot more. I'm working on several videos, one of them about the uh, Psytala Horrida, the assassin bugs, because a few people have asked about those as well. Um, how do I keep them? How do you breed them? Uh, and so on. So I'm working on that and a few other videos and just general feeding videos and so on as well. Um, I'm filming a lot of stuff now that I haven't, or, or haven't thought of filming before, just random feedings and so on. This is what you people want to see. Um, anyway... Thanks for watching and see you next time.